Frog fans. Uh, welcome back. Long time no see. Um, yeah, school and crap and all of that. Anyways, today I'm going to be going over the 10 most common and worst mistakes people make when first getting into painting newborn dolls. So number one is the just a huge pet peeve of mine. Using store-bought acrylic paints. I often see people say folk art paints, Fol folk art, folk art. I, pronunciation doesn't matter. Do not use acrylic paints that you can buy from your local craft store. Just don't do it. Do not do it. Do not do it. No. Every time a new reborn artist decides to use store-bought craft paint for their dolls, a baby unicorn dies, okay? My unicorn! Being a little dramatic here. The reasons why you actually shouldn't decide to do this is it's not made for... This kind of paint, this, the store-bought acrylic paint isn't made to adhere to the vinyl. They do sell acrylic paint mediums to mix the store-bought craft paint into. However, look, I'm going to get painfully honest here, but every single doll I've ever seen painted with craft store paint looks like crap, okay? I'm just going to say it. Oh, brutal. I'm sorry if that's you, and maybe, you know, maybe there is a few artists out there that have craft the secret code to painting good quality dolls with store-bought paint but i have yet to see any it just doesn't end up looking good and from what i've seen even people a year or so in when you should be getting relatively good progress in the way your your art looks on your dolls the people who are sticking with craft store paint still look like crap. It's not made to adhere to the vinyl. Even when you use a medium, it just, it's too thick. It's too opaque. If you try to put it on too thick, it cracks. Layers don't work well because they crack. The more paint you put on it and the more you dilute it, the shinier it gets. And yes, there is matting agents, but it just you're just not going to get a doll that looks like a baby. And if you get a doll that looks good at all, if you get you might be able to at some point achieve a doll that a good looking doll, but you're never going to achieve a reborn that looks like a reborn as in a doll that looks like it could be a real child and that's the point of a reborn doll just please for the love of god don't do it i know it is so tempting i went down that path myself you know do some research look into the results other people are getting just please do not use store-bought acrylic paint you will regret it later and it's i know when you're having a low budget crisis sort of thing going into this it is so tempting to just do it but it's a waste of money frankly just save up buy some good acrylic paints that are recommended for reborns from sites like mcpherson's or bountiful baby or invest in genesis heat set okay so second most common mistake i think that people make when getting into the hobby is not doing research before you buy the supplies and start painting. There is so much you need to know and decide before you buy a kit or buy paint. You know, going back to the acrylic store-bought paint debate, you know, you need to do research into that first. Decide if you want to use reborn acrylic paints because we are not using store-bought we went over that already or if you want to use genesis heat set you need to do a lot of research on that first and you need to do research on techniques and do's and don'ts and all this different stuff i was a teenager i know shocker i'm not a teenager <laughs> 
Anyways, I was about 16, 17 when I got into Reborns, and I knew right away that I wanted to paint them because I loved it as an art form, as well as a collecting hobby. But, you know, 16, 17, I didn't have a lot of money, so I didn't have the resources to buy all the stuff. So for about a year before I actually got my hands on any reborning supplies, I treated it like a course, basically. I did all the research I could get, and I will try and link some helpful free resources below that I studied basically like it was a class. You know, I took notes because that's the only thing I could do because I was so excited and wanted to do this so bad, but I didn't have the money to put into it. And I, even if you do have the money to put into it, I recommend you do that first. I recommend you, you know, take a, at least a couple months and go over all the free resources or buy some tutorials. There's a lot of good free tutorials out there and there's a lot of good pay for, paid for tutorials out there. I can't stress enough how important it is to do at least some research before you put paint to vinyl because there's just so many mistakes you can make and so many of those mistakes you can't undo once you've done them and you're gonna feel so dumb when you make some sort of irreparable mistake and then you look it up on Google and you're like, oh crap. If I had looked this up before, it would have been so much simpler because I had so many of those moments that could have been those moments but weren't because I looked into it so much. And even though I spent about a year doing research before I even bought supplies, I still had moments where I was like, what's going on here? Why is this so weird? Why did it turn out like that? And then I look into it and I'm like, oh, that's why. So this is not something you can just buy the supplies for and go on. I mean, you can, but it's you're going to thank yourself later if you do the proper research first. Okay, so the third thing that I would say is a mistake that people do is, and I'm guilty of this myself, is that first doll you get, painting it way too quickly, and following, if you follow a tutorial, taking the steps in that tutorial and only doing them once in a linear process without, you know, reassessing your work and seeing what areas you need to return to. For good looking dolls that are lifelike, it's not a linear process. There are steps that you should do at the beginning and there are steps you should do at the end, but almost every step needs to be returned to and touched up and build upon like, modeling, I'll do at least twice in the process. I'll go over certain areas of veining and blushing, I do like five to six times throughout my building of the layers and the work. And this is something that's going to take a lot of time and it's going to take you building some instinct and you know, trial and error a bit to figure out what steps need what and, you know, to get to the point where you can look at the doll in progress and figure out what steps you need to return to. And I know, like, it is so hard to not finish your first doll as quickly as possible because you're so excited to have the finished progress, pro progress product and I did that. That's why my first doll looked so crap. But if you're a beginner, I would urge you to try and take some time, take it slow, and even when you think you're done, go back and try to look and see what steps you could revisit to, to try and make it look better. Put Emma down because she's heavy. <laughs> Okay, number four is not using the proper lighting. Again, this was a mistake that I made. For lighting for Reborns, you want to make sure that you have a really well-lit work area that's lit from multiple angles because, and you want to use light bulbs that simulate natural daylight because if you're using a normal light bulb, which uses yellow white, oh, 
boy, I can't English today. So if you're using just your average, average light bulb that you would put in your ceiling, that creates a yellow light, which is going to affect how your doll looks because you're not going to be able to see certain details and it's going to affect the overall complexion and there's going to be little things that you just don't see and when you take it outside all of these like grotesque things that you didn't notice inside are just gonna pop off your doll and you're gonna be like oh my god what have I done so you want to be using a light bulb that replicates natural daylight that creates a white light, which makes it so much easier to see all of the little imperfections and make sure that this light is like hanging practically above your head or make sure that you have multiple angles of lighting because once you finish that doll and you haven't seen these little, little errors that you've made, you can't go back and fix them. Number five is sort of two, but it's like the opposite ends of two spectrums that I see often. The more common one I would say is painting too light. And I think, you know, this, I did this as well, and it comes from being afraid to paint darker or heavier because you're afraid to make anything too permanent that might ruin the doll. And it's hard to find that balance, but I would say the trick is to, like I said, keep going back and keep adding more because often people finish their dolls and you look at it on a picture online as a more experienced artist and you go, is there even paint on that doll? Meanwhile, you've worked a long time on it, but your paint is so light that no one can see it especially in pictures because dolls are notoriously hard to photograph. However, you don't want to go too far in the other direction, which is something I've also seen, where I wouldn't say it's painting too dark, but painting, you can paint too dark, but more often I think it's painting too heavy. And, you know, your paint is too thick and you're trying to make it too dark and it just ends up looking muddy and dirty, especially if you're doing a doll with a darker skin tone, which I wouldn't recommend doing as a beginner. I would recommend doing a few lighter skin tone dolls first because it is much harder to get a darker skin tone and it's much easier to paint too heavy and get that muddled, dirty, kind of stuck on look and it'll, it'll look very painted which is not what you're going for. So you, this is going to take a lot of time to learn and trial and error, but you wanna to try to not paint too light and go back and refine details to the point where your work is visible, but you also wanna be careful to not go too dark and especially not to use paint that is too thick. Number six is a bit of a punch in the gut too, I would say pretty much all beginner artists and that is not so much not in the creation of the doll itself but in the afterward which you know getting into selling the doll overpricing your work so again i'm going to be brutally honest here and i'm not i'm talking about myself too because this is definitely something i did and most people do it but your first doll I'm sorry, it's gonna be ugly. <laughs> Maybe there's like the rare miracle person out there whose first doll isn't pretty cruddy, but the sad truth is you need to be willing to lose money on your first doll or even your first, I would say five to ten dolls you need to be willing to lose money or else you're just not going to make a sale because the sad truth is your amateur work actually makes the kit less valuable than the materials that went into it i know it's heartbreaking it's sad and you absolutely should be proud of the work you do chances are you're gonna go back later and go oh you were ugly because i know i've done that my first dolls were so ugly, 
but I'm still proud of them because they were necessary steps into creating something better. She may not be very pretty now, but she was somebody's baby once. So absolutely be proud of your first couple dolls, but keep in mind that you need to price them for the value that they will be worth to other people based on the quality of the work you've done. And that can be hard to do, but basically, you know, keep, you just kind of have to keep bringing the price down until it sells, basically. And I know it's a punch in the gut because you work so hard on it. You need to be proud of it yourself, but keep in mind that, you know, this is other people's money and they're not going to, they don't have that same value to your work that you do. So it, it's one of the saddest parts of making dolls, but you just have to be willing to be a little bit self-deprecating. Is that the right word? I think so. You have to be willing to put yourself down a little bit and be very critical of your own work or else you're never going to sell it. And, you know, you need to, you know, I was a little bit too full of myself in the beginning as well. And I think it's something that's good for artists and common for artists. The more you go on, the more you look back at your work, the more your older work starts looking crappy to you. And that's a very natural thing. I'm going on a tangent here. Anyways, you have to be willing to lose money in this hobby. Okay, so number seven is also in the selling or promotion of your work if you're getting into selling or building a reputation for yourself. Posing your dolls in your photos and making sure you have quality photos is so important because, you know, people online can't see what your doll looks like in real life and dolls are notoriously hard to photograph and it takes a lot of trial and error and you don't necessarily need a terrific quality camera a lot of smartphones have pretty good quality cameras in them today but what you do need to be mindful of is making sure that your photos are well lit they are focused and that you get a lot of detailed photos you know like details of the face and the hands and the feet and everything and it can be really hard and frustrating, but try to keep trying different lighting, different angles and all that, and different like settings and whatever device you're using until you can kind of get a few pictures where you start to see some of the real detail in your work. Even if this detail is stuff that you're not proud of, even if this detail is like boo-boos or mistakes, because the best thing you can do when selling and building a reputation for yourself is be brutally honest. I've always made sure that any mistakes I made have been, even if it's like the tiniest mistakes, one of the dolls I sold had like a microscopic mistake on one of the tips of her fingers. And the person was like, I can't even see what you're talking about. But it was more obvious to me because I was the artist. But even that, I don't want to you want to be brutally honest because that's the best way. It could lose you a sale, sure, but it's the best way to make a name for yourself. Also in this is the posing of the dolls. It's a mistake I see all the time. It's a good idea to take a picture of your doll without the clothes on because the one thing you don't want is for someone to buy your doll thinking it's a full body silicone and then, you know, getting it and thinking they've been ripped off because it's a cloth body. So I would recommend taking a picture of the doll with the clothes off. However, still pose it in a realistic way. And all of your pictures should have the doll posed in a realistic way. I see so many pictures of the doll just like spread eagle, just flopped on someone's couch or bed like this. Is it dead? And maybe like if you're whether your work is really good or really bad, not posing your doll properly is going to make it look a hundred times worse. And if your work is not the greatest, posing the doll properly is going to make it look better. So yeah, just make sure that, you know, 
you don't need to get like the whole crib and you know you don't need all this baby furniture i would recommend maybe getting a bouncer because you can get them pretty cheap because it just cradles them in the perfect way to have that realistic pose or you know just take an old bin that's large enough to fit a doll in and pat it on each end and then put a blanket over it and they kind of fit in there perfectly just never have your doll just you know flopping back and you want them to if you wouldn't see a real baby pose in that position don't pose your doll like that because it really does affect how you it really does affect how the doll is presented to other people online and it really does affect you making a sale or not number eight is kind of a hot topic especially with people who are on a tighter budget and people who are newer to the community but it's proper weighting materials now this one frustrated me in the beginning and i didn't get it either at first but you really can't be weighting your dolls with sand and especially not rocks you know your own personal doll that you keep for yourself you can put whatever you want in it but really when it comes to a doll that you're going to be selling you pretty much have to use standard glass beads they are more expensive and yes it does mean that you have to price your doll higher unless you're in the very beginning phases which basically means you're just going to be losing more money which i know is a punch in the gut but using the proper weighting materials is a lot better than having a doll be sent to someone and then them smearing your name all over online reborn forums and social media and all that because you are the person that puts rocks or sand in their dolls which there are some people who are really really uppity about it and would and take it to the point to say that they've been scammed because their doll is weighted with sand which i don't think it should be taken quite that far but there are some legitimate reasons i mean number one is kind of like the hobby industry standard but there's a reason for that at first i didn't get it because my personal dolls were weighted with sand for a long time but the dolls I sold were always weighted with glass beads because I was afraid of the... What's it called? Can I word today? I was afraid of the, you know, repercussions that might happen if I used sand, which I'm really glad I did because sand just in general isn't a good weighting material. It leaks through the pantyhose, it gets everywhere inside the doll, it sticks to everything, it, and then it like, it gets matted inside the polyfill and just like creates this like kind of gross, sandy knot sort of situation inside the doll and it's just, it's really not a good time, it's not a good situation, it gets everywhere when you take the doll apart and Murray, the sand always with the sand and glass beads are just so much better honestly yeah um if you're on a budget if it's your own doll that you're keeping it weight it with whatever you want but if you're sending it to someone else especially if they paid for it you need to invest in some glass beads okay back into painting sort of things uh Number nine, total waste of money, expensive paintbrushes. They sell a lot of high-end paintbrushes on Reborn sites, which, you know, some of them are worth it, and when you get into a professional level, some of them might be worth it. But as a beginner, and honestly, even when you get a little more experienced, your paintbrushes are just going to get ruined. Sure, cheaper ones are going to get ruined faster, but except for a select few, like special hair painting brushes that you just can't get in a pack of cheaper brushes, they're pretty much just throwing your money away because 
whether you're using a reborn designed acrylic or using Genesis heat set, you're just going to ruin them eventually. And often, depending on how many dolls you're painting and the techniques you're using, you're going to ruin them pretty quickly. The acrylic, regardless of how much you're washing it, and washing it wears away at them too, but regardless of how clean you keep them, eventually the acrylic's going to get gunked up. And, you know, you're always going to forget a brush every now and then, and it's going to become unusable. If you're using heat set, the paint thinner is just so caustic that you constantly have brush heads falling off, the cleaning of the brushes pulls the bristles out, the paint stains them to the point that they're kind of unusual, any unusable anymore, and then there's also a common technique is pouncing the brush, and that just makes the bristles go pop to the point that the brush again is unusable is unusable. So my biggest suggestion when buying brushes, when you're getting into hair painting, maybe buy a few specialty brushes that have the really thin ends. But other than that, just buy the cheapest brushes you can find. I my favorite brushes are the multi-pack of just really cheap brushes that you can get at Michael's for $15. I pretty much don't use any. I have a few other slightly more expensive brush sets that I got from Michael's. But yeah, do not over invest in brushes because it's just such a waste of money. I don't think this is a super common thing, but... I'm sure it does happen, and this can definitely affect your motives and want to get into the hobby. Do not, under any circumstance, get into this for the money. You know, I've talked a lot about things that will affect your likelihood to sell your dolls because a lot of people do want to sell their work. However, this is not going to be something that's profitable for a very long time. And I would say if ever, I've just started making a small profit line on my dolls and I've been doing this since I was 17. I am now 23. The chances of you making a significant profit out of becoming a reborn artist is astronomically low. You, I can't stress this enough that you, you have to have a passion for the artwork and the hobby. And if that's just not there, then it's not going to be worth it to you. It's just going to be far too frustrating. I'm not discouraging anyone from getting into the hobby. If you have that passion and this is something you really want to do, absolutely get into it and absolutely plan to sell your dolls. But just be aware that it's not a job and you're going to lose a lot more money than you're going to make for years to come so yeah absolutely do not plan to make this your full-time job because you know like shoot for the stars but make sure you have a giant trampoline on the landing pad because chances are you're gonna crash and burn a few times. Okay, um, I hope that this was helpful for some people. I also hope that I didn't offend anybody. I know that I got like pretty brutally honest there. I just wanted to paint a very accurate description of what getting into painting and selling dolls is really like because it was nothing like I expected it to be. But, um, yeah, I hope I didn't offend anyone or put anyone down. This is a very beautiful art form and a very beautiful hobby to get involved in. You should just keep your expectations reasonable. And, yeah, that's all for now. Keep living the frog wings life, and I will see you later at some point. Bye, Emma.